Hello and welcome to another Microsoft Word tutorial. In this tutorial we will be learning about how to work with the bullet and the number lists. As you can see in this document that I have set up two lists. One is a grocery list and one is the appointments list. So now we'll be first of all exploring how to set up the bulleted lists. In order to set up the bulleted list I just typed in a bunch of items one on each line and in order to convert it to a bulleted list I would like to select these items. There's several different ways of selecting the items. Never select your text when you have to select multiple lines right in the center. Either start from the right hand side of the last line and start selecting upwards or on the, from the left hand side of the first line and start selecting downwards. One of the other ways, if you don't want to hold, press and hold uh, like this, the way I've used it, there is an alternate way that you can take your mouse into the margin region. As the mouse moves from the text region or the content or the page region to a margin region, it changes its mouse pointer from an I beam to an arrow. Over here, you can now press down your left click and hold it and start coming down in the margin. As you start coming down in the margin, you're going to notice that it will going to select the text. We're going to try this approach again. So we're going to click here, I'll start coming down all the way to the bottom, <clears throat> and that selects the five items that I wanted to select. Now after selecting these five items, I would now like to change this to a bulleted list. The bulleted lists are available under the paragraph group in the home tab and in the paragraph group here is the bullet list items. If I click on this option that will automatically going to convert all five of these items into its bullets. Now after I created the bulleted lists if I would like to change the appearance of the bullets I can click the arrow right next to and then I can choose one of the other options and as I bring my mouse over the other bulleted item lists it gives me a live preview and I can choose any one of them. If I am interested in choosing one of them I can simply click on it and that will now become my bulleted list. If I would like to increase the font size of the item that I've selected in my bullets I can simply click on the bullet itself and then I can go and apply a different size, a different color. Apart from that if I would like to still change my bullets I can select the text for which the bullet needs to be changed. Then I can click the arrow again and in the list click on define new bullet. When you click define new bullet it gives you a dialog box in which you can choose from pictures to be turned into bullets or you can choose symbols to be turned into bullets or you can use fonts to be turned into bullets. One of the options is to click symbol, for example, if I click symbol, it gives me several different symbols to choose from. So if I choose one of these symbols from Wingdings, or I can choose from Webdings, or I can choose from Wingdings 2, all of these different options are available to me. So let's say if I go ahead and click on one of these options here, and click OK, now that becomes my new bullet. And if I click OK again, that will going to now finalize it. If I would like to still change it to a picture, I can click this arrow again and go down to define new bullet, then click picture. That gives me several different picture bullets. I can choose one of the picture bullets. As I choose a picture bullet, I can click OK and click OK again and that finalizes my bullets to be a picture bullet. So this is how you can be working with the bullets. If I were to work with numbered bullets or the numbered lists, I can select these items again. And in the paragraph group, to the right of the bullets, we have numbers. So if I just click on here, I get Arabic numerals. If I click in the list, I can work with two different formats of Arabic numerals, or rather three in fact. And then I have Roman numerals, and then I have the ABC. So this allows me to work with several different formats of numbers and I can see a life preview as I move my mouse around it. So let's say if I select this one and click and this finalizes 
And just like I've changed the text color and I've changed the text size of the bullets above, I can do the exact same thing here as well. Now let's say if I press enter here, and then press enter again, pressing two enters mean that I'm not interested in continuing with the list. So if you just press enter once, it thinks that you still would like to continue with the list and give you the next item in line. So now I would like to uh, divide up my list into multiple sections. So I would like to call this personal section. And I would like to go down here under appointments and I would like to create a professional section. Now notice when I'm typing professional here, it is taking the same look and feel as appointments. So in order to undo all the properties that are given out to appointments, so I undid my last change. And the best thing is to start with normal. As I start with normal, if I now type professional, it will going to start per typing professional in the normal view. Now, I'm going to move some items around. In the professional, I have list, for now, I have listed dentist, soccer game, office hours. So I'm going to remove some of these items from here. So let's say instead of dentist, I want to say uh, meeting with faculty. Office 2010 Seminar. These are the three items in professional. In personal, I have soccer game, gym, and let's say dentist. Now I would like to convert these three items into a bulleted list again. So here I click on one, two, three again. As soon as I do that, it gives me a, a, a lightning symbol here. What does a lightning symbol mean here? And it's basically whenever an autocorrect option is available to you, it gives you this lightning symbol. And it pretty much is asking me, would you like to create a new list or would you like to continue from the list that is already going on from the list above? So if I want to continue because they're all part of my appointments, so I can just click here and say continue numbering. So even though I have divided my list into two categories, I could still continue to use the same numbering order. Well. Catch you in the next tutorial.